<laughs> That's my throne. Yeah. If I had to classify John and Tony as a family, it would be my aunt and uncle because, well, he's the cool uncle and she's the cool aunt. You're not going anywhere. That's just me, but John is John is actually. Like I said, that's my uncle right there. Like, hey, I'll do anything for him. And I think I am the bodyguard down here, but I'm not. <laughs> She put that on there. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. John, I heard that you take care of animals. I know that you have food. I can smell it. Will you please take me in too? I will protect you. <laughs> I'm the Outlander. <laughs> I started this. I got that name from a book, Deathlands, and then he did Outlanders, and I've read the whole series, and it's a great series of books, and it's about survivalism in the future. It's an expression of freedom, in a way, and it's self-sufficiency and we care for other people. We care for each other and we make our own family. That's part of what being an outlander is. Even though Shrek and I were gone for a little while, we were led back here because this is home. It's where we are meant to be. We're not meant to be out there paycheck to paycheck. We're meant to be out looking after other people who are less fortunate. And that is what we do. John's done a lot for me. He's got me off of hard drugs. He's helped me get over some of my anger issues, how to let certain things go. Once my uncle died, my uncle was teaching me how to survive off the land. Once I got with John, some of those old teachings actually came back. And John's still teaching me. I'm only 29 years old. He's teaching me a lot. John, John has actually taken me in twice now because I left right after his leg. And I just came back Wednesday. Would you consider John and Tony more of a family, even though you're not blood related? Yes, that's that's the thing. Like you make families out here. You just, that's you right. Know, I, I've told my families abandon you, and that's why a lot of people are. Out I've here. told my 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 blood family that the homeless are more family than them because I've been out here so long. You know that you get those relationships with people. You consider them like your dad, your mother. You okay. know brothers, sisters, uncles, whatever. If I had to classify John and Tony as a family, it would be my aunt and uncle because, well, he's the cool uncle and she's the cool aunt. You're not going anywhere. That's just me, but John is, John is actually, like I said, that's my uncle right there. Like, hey, I'll do anything for him. And I think I am the bodyguard down here, but I'm not. <laughs> Here? Oh, about four years. Actually, I retired in 2015. I lived out in the country for a while, a couple of years, and then I came back to St. Louis, and uh, I just kind of found, I, I, I started 
looking into the homeless situation with people and I got real interested in it. I'm not exactly sure how long I've lived out here. It was hard to tell the date when I didn't have a phone uh, or a calendar. But I know I first got out of here August 18th, and that was last year. And then I was gone for five months, and then I came back. You wouldn't believe everything I built over there is from people's trash. They throw it away. I mean, even stuff still in the box, you know? And we go and salvage it. I mean, it's, I call it a recycled home because everything is recycled and we make it work. Instead of letting the garbage just sit out here, we bring it down here and we work with it. Lumber, boards, uh, tarps, couches, furniture. I mean, even toilet seats. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe the stuff I found still in the box. Hey, my favorite thing is the coolers. People are like, oh, I got this cooler. It's dirty, so they throw it out here. All I do is clean it. I mean, I have six coolers over there that there's nothing wrong with because somebody threw them away because they got a little dirty. And I just clean them out and I go, damn, these are like brand new coolers. You wouldn't believe the stuff people throw away. I mean, I, I guess that's what comes from having, you know, a lot of money. You don't care, so you just, but we use it. Everything I have is recycled. A lot of people, they dump things up the street from us and we actually go up there and collect them. John is very good at building things out of scrap. So he'll find pallets, he'll find plywood. I've collected bricks, I've collected cinder blocks. Uh, we've gotten water buckets, we've gotten a wheelbarrow, we've gotten tools, and it's all been collected. It's all resources that we use. The best thing I ever got when I was first here was paper. And I became a writer. We'll get a box of apples from a church group. And I told them once, I'm not sure we'll go through all of these. They might end up in the compost pile. And they said, that's okay. You know, put it in the compost or give it to the animals. Everybody just shares and cares. And that's what our community does down here. That is part of being an outlander. I don't consider us homeless. No. Home, you, you know what homeless says? Helpless. You know, homeless, helpless. Same thing. You're helpless. You're not helping yourself. I know how to survive. I know how to live off the land. I actually like this. You know, I really do. I don't want to sit in an apartment with my air conditioning and my 50 screen, flat screen, you know, and my cable TV and my satellite, you know, and paying the man electric bills, water bills, gas bills, and having neighbors, you know, snooping on. No, no, I, I don't want to live like that. I don't want to live like that anymore. I've done that. Been there, done that. I like, I like, I like the plants. I like nature. I like the bugs and the bees and the plants and the trees. You can look at the animals, but don't touch them. I really do, because they're, they're already here. You have groundhogs, you have raccoons, you have possums, you have a whole bunch of birds. We actually have had deer come through here. They swim across the river and they'll walk through here, but they got no place. You know, we have coyotes, which got one of my chickens, but it, it's, it's, it, it is what it is, but yeah. Yeah, I really would like to see it because the plant life is very important. All of the creatures that we have, they're all rescues. Yeah. How many animals do you guys have have, have you rescued? Well, we've and what are their names? Well, they're all rescues. All rescues. Even my dog. Somebody dumped dog. it down here as a puppy and I raised Tiger. it. Cookie? The cat. We have one cat that actually approached. That's Kitty? Tiger. She okay. she came and adopted us. She's got oh, a. Yeah. She, somebody declawed her and had her shots and spaded and then dumped her. And she's got a hurt paw. It looks like it got burnt. 
How many chickens are left? We have 11 chickens. We had 12, but we lost the one. So I think in total, there are 16 animals. And John, what, what happened to your leg? Crossing the street one night up here and uh, a guy pulled over the crosswalk. So I'm like walking behind him 20 feet. And then he decides to put it in reverse and back up real fast. I guess he didn't see any car lights behind him, but he didn't see me and a friend. And we got knocked 20 feet back. Hey, it, that was New Year's. It broke my leg in three places. It was January 1st of this year, 10 months ago. And I have a six inch plate and, and it can never, it'll, it'll always be what it is. My friend got his ankle broken, but EMS was really good. They, they got us in there. And uh, so is St. Louis University. That's a good hospital. I recommend that for anybody. Don't go to bars. explain um because i think we must have lost some footage the uh arctica thing you do that so oh, just, i guess just, well, uh, it's been here 18 years i think shrek knows best quite honestly yeah yeah because yeah. he's worked with it before yeah it's a great art festival and you really need to look online and read it up they do it every year i believe i think some you people mean. think it's a pagan thing but yes. it's yes. not it's it's, it's about art expression i mean anything from the performing arts to creating things out of nature to just uh, ideas yeah you know and it's a celebration of art they build a burning man or that's it's actually a lady it's not a man we it's, call it that it, it, it's a thing they build every year and they burn it's it. called yeah. our lady of artica they built that in two days you got people that have their art museums. These are people that are independent artists that do not have any source of backing for finances on this. Their independent artists actually started this. Quite honestly, some of the stuff you see, you will never see in a museum. I don't care how much no, you pay, you're not going to see and it. And it's sad because it's, it's only there and you got to photograph it because it gets torn down and it's gone. They're going to have fires, they're going to do, uh, the people that juggle the fire and spin the fire, they're doing that Sunday night, and then they do the burn, which they call the burn, is because, you know, you light that on fire, everybody stands, everybody dances and goes in the circle with it. My son passed away last year, and one of the purposes of the Lady of Artica is, if you have anything you want to get rid of, any negativity, anything, like, you know, it don't have to be negative. Anything you want to get off your mind, your chest, whatever, or if you want good intentions, they'll give you a permanent marker. You write it on wherever you can find, and when they burn it, the you know it releases up into the universe. You know they believe that's just one of their things they do. It's not, it's not pagan, but it's not. I would say it's more new age, basically. Like, you know, the people that believe in well, the universe. And we believe in the spirit of the universe. And when you have negativity or negative thoughts like that, you just send them up out into the universe. You get them out of your life. And the universe will take care of it.
cotton belts. Strong she stands, slave to no man. Many feet have tread upon her walk. The lives she's seen, decades between. Few pass now, but she lives on. A fixture now, a work of art. Shelter to those who have not. Inspiring many, a canvas, a stage. The scenery changes, but she lives on. Many storms pass, tear at her walls. Standing still, outliving them all. This is the Cotton Belt, a crossing for many, a home for a few.